Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another celebrity channeled video. This one is video number two on the late singer and songstress and entertainer Whitney Houston. And I've been trying to do this video for a couple of days. Her energy pops in and out and I'm sure it's because it's Leo season. But I wanted to make sure I did justice what she was trying to tell me. So I'm going to try to explain it the best way that I can. Okay, so we did the first video and Whitney came through and she began expressing what was happening for her and how she was doing, I think it's like seven years after her passing. Now, she started to come through again after I shut the video off and then she was explaining to me these other aspects of her thought process. So I thought I would try to explain it to you. Again, I'm trying to do it justice as a go-between between here and there. Okay, so Whitney was basically explaining to me at the time and she went right to the time when she was talking to Brandy at the Grammys with Clive Davis. They were in a some sort of uh, reporter press circuit thing and Whitney walked in. If you Google it, she walked in. You could just kind of see her walk on camera, which I found uproariously funny because like nobody does that. They're in the middle of filming and doing questions and in walks Miss Leo and she walks right over to Brandy and she's standing in front of Brandy and you can see the back of her hair is wet and she hands Brandy the paper which Brandy has never spoken about. So I was really curious what that was about and what it was about according to Whitney. Now I haven't talked to Brandy and she doesn't say what it is but what the information that I got from Whitney is that when she handed Brandy that paper she was saying I was too scared to do it and I was like do what? What is she saying? She was saying it's almost my time. Like I am being um, elevated. It's my time to go. I'm going. I am, I want to say like chosen, but I don't mean it in an arrogant way like that. She felt she was stepping into her destiny at that time. Now to the average viewer watching the show, she seemed kind of crazy walking in in the middle of that meeting and interrupting it while the cameras were on and uh, you know Brandy was being interviewed and there were other people around. She seemed kind of like off kilter doing that and it seemed really odd. But Whitney had constructed her life as a young girl growing up in a very uh, Christian religious family. This is what she tells me, okay, so I don't know, but whatever, she's saying that. And she had believed very much, and she was a good girl is what she's saying, okay? She was a good girl, she believed like that. It wasn't until she got to be about 11, 12, when she started to see herself differently. And what she's showing me is that she had communication with somebody around her from when she was very small, like six. And I suspect this had to do with the fact that she had Pisces in her chart because Pisces will often pull in unseen energy without understanding where it's coming from. So children with a Neptunian aspect or strong Pisces in their chart, sun, moon, or rising, such as Whitney with the rising, um, Neptune on the sun, Neptune square the sun, they often live in the ethers the astral levels and the ethers and they live in the spirit realm now in the spirit realm just like on earth there is good and there is bad so Wendy had this communication with what we'll call a guide okay because that's kind of how she's showing it to me this was her friend this was somebody that advised her so from the young age of five six Whitney was talking to this person always and all the time and this person was kind of guiding her career is what she tells me now I know her parents were singers I know her aunt was singer I know her godparents were singers I know she grew up in the church all of that stuff but she was listening to this guy there was something on a spiritual sense that made her feel different when she talked to him. It was a him, him energy, male energy. So she continued to communicate with this person. This is what she's relaying to me. She continued to communicate with this person and she communicated with them all through her childhood. When she got to be 11 or 12 and things were not quite the way that she wanted them to be, keep in mind when a girl hits about 11 or 12, it's that tween stage and it's that hormonal stage. You're you're kind of a kid, but you're kind of going into womanhood and you probably don't look right or you look strange or you have pimples or you're too tall and gangly, which was, you know, what I think her problem was is she didn't look the way she wanted to look, which is very typical of every single human being out there. They're not whatever it is they think they should be. They don't look like their parents quite in their head. They don't understand that they're going to grow into themselves like, like people grow into their hand and their feet size and they grow taller. She didn't get that, but she also 
wasn't being seen. Okay, so that's kind of like the ego part of her. She wasn't being seen the way she wanted to. And this guide on the other side was saying to her, no, you can be seen. You will be seen. You are special. Now, she enjoyed that conversation because at the same time that that was going on, she was starting her romantic kind of sexual experimentation with another woman, with a girl, okay? So that was going on behind the scenes in a very normal way, like as a teenager, you know, kissing people, connecting with people like that, learning what your sexuality is. And then over here, she had this guide talking to her about she was special. She could be seen the way she wanted to. She already had kind of um, a reservedness and a shyness for her choice in relationships. And then over here, she could be seen. So she could be seen the way that she wanted to be seen. This is what I'm seeing. This is what she's explaining to me. So Whitney continued to talk to this person and get guidance from this person and focus, you know, on what this person said. And it was a subtle grooming for her position. She's showing me her position in the world. So I was groomed for my position. Kind of like we say they groom royalty. Much like in the Buddhist religion where a child is born and that child is considered to be noble or a king um, or a hierarchy within the Buddhist community. And from a small age of two, the chosen one, so to speak, is elevated on earth. Now, Whitney is talking behind the scenes. She's saying on earth, she was Whitney. She was Whitney the singer. She was Whitney the kid. She was Whitney the teenager, the young adult, the mom, you know, married to Bobby Brown. She was all of those Whitneys. But on that day when she went to talk to Brandy, that was about letting Brandy know that she had told her guide she was ready to cross over so this makes me feel like she had agreed to her passing in order to become who she was. So Whitney is making me feel like when she handed Brandy that note, she was ready to step in to her, her noble position within the universe, not on earth, okay? So something about her had been groomed since very young and she'd been given all the gifts and she was, I don't want to use the word God, that's not what I mean, but she was in a position of royalty, which is really funny for a Leo to think that because the Leo would think that, right? They knew how to get her. But I think it's actually the Pisces in her chart that allowed that energy to come through. And this guide, because she said he was my guide showing me where I was situated. So there was something about her doing a ritual or a ceremony to cross from this world to the next. Whitney very strongly had a belief that she could exit this world and go into the next world and take her position. That's why she responded the way that she did. When it came down to the guide collecting on that energy, Whitney became hesitant, like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to leave the planet, my daughter, you know, my family, everybody, my friends, what am I gonna do? And it feels like she was having some discord within herself, even though for years she'd been in her own mind knowing that this was her position. She would be to take over. This was what she would do. I feel that the death in the bathtub from what she's trying to explain to me was actually her choosing to leave the planet. Now, I do not by any means mean she committed suicide. That's not what I mean. What I mean is for a very long time, her guide on the other side, who I take to actually be not a guide, but actually some kind of evil bad force that was grooming her in order to cajole her into doing something, to jumping from this world to the next world, for their own gain on the other side. That's actually how it feels to me. I feel that she had said, I will do this, because of course, if we're 11 and 12, even 20, we're like, oh yeah, when I'm 60, that's old. However, when you get into your 40s and 50s, it's actually not that old, it's like right there knocking you down. So I feel like she became hesitant to live up to her end of the bargain, and that was the struggle from the first day when she almost drowned in the bathtub and they had to resuscitate her to the next day when she actually did drown in the bathtub. 
And so how does that happen? I don't feel she knew how it was going to happen. I feel like she was not given that information and it was hidden peripherally or energetically from her and they were cloaking behind her energy. And keep in mind, when she stepped out of her body, that's what she's saying. She was kind of in an area where she was held off or held to the side and not going across right away, um, not ascending up. And her daughter, and I'm going to tell you this, her daughter was not supposed to have that happen to her. That was not the deal. That was not the bargain. That was not the deal. That's what I'm hearing. Now, why would that happen to her daughter? This is, this is what Whitney is just understanding right now. Why would that happen to Bobby Christina? What if Bobby Christina, like all children, every single child on the planet Earth, who when they are younger and maybe emotionally immature and idolizes their parent, male or female, mother or father, and starts to follow in their footsteps. So this is why you have children that pick up cigarettes or drugs or whatever. Now let's say you had a mother that does rituals a little bit on the dark side, away from the Christian bringing up, but to the dark side. And let's say this person is doing the rituals like that. Let's say the child sees that. And let's say the child says, well, it got my mom, you know, this, this, and this. And I'm not saying Whitney wasn't talented. That's not what I mean. But there's a shitload of talented people on the planet who get nowhere because on this planet, the energy has a hierarchy and that's what she's saying. And there are people that need to take their place on the planet. And that's what Bobby Christina was trying to do. She kind of screwed up with her stuff. She was doing stuff like the mother was doing. She was emulating her mother, which is not unusual, but unfortunately in this particular instance, it took her right out and it happened. The karma right there was so quick that it almost was like a boomerang. She sent the energy out and it came right back. She might not have known what she was doing or as I feel it, she may have picked up energy from the same guide that was talking to her mother and it tricked her into responding that quickly with her having no idea about that, just wanting to be close to her mother, to be like her mother. And that's how Bobby Christina passed over. So Whitney was in this kind of chaotic mess with having to give back or assign her role and her role was on the other side. So when she speaks of her God, like she did in the last video, I mean, of God, she's speaking of her God, which is really interesting. It took me a while to catch it because she was laughing at me and I was like, oh, I get it. She's with God. She's with her God. So she is happy fulfilling where she is. Here's what I picked up around that, just in case any of you are thinking of making the same kind of, uh, deal or the same kind of arrangement. What I picked up with that is when she crossed out of her body, at first she didn't know where she was and it, there was nothing around her. So she had nothing to base it on. But then the things when I'm looking through my eyes look very much like what she thought they would look like. Keep in mind, sometimes we are out in space when we cross over on the astral level and we are showing, let's say, let's say you die at your breakfast table and you have a cup of tea and you're eating your toast and this is what you did every morning and you have your running shoes on. Suddenly you're on the other side and you're sitting at your table. You have your cup of tea. You have your toast. Obviously you don't need these things because you're not in a body. Your running shoes are on. However, the soul has not accepted where the soul is. So the soul is showing what is familiar on the other side. I feel like this is what Whitney was saying to me. I feel like what was around her was what she needed to see from the arrangement that she made with the guide who I'm going to call an entity who I'm going to call a little bit on a demonic side who used Whitney's energy as a child and that voice and that experience and that creative because remember human beings are the only ones that can be creatively expressive like that and they use that energy to cloak behind and hide within Whitney's energy and then the deal was done because they groomed her for it she didn't think anything of it like not in a bad way it was like oh this is I'm taking my place spiritually that makes sense to me that actually makes sense so the information that I picked up about Whitney was that on a certain level, this grooming had conditioned her, which is what grooming does. It conditions us to accept certain things as reality when really they shouldn't be in our space. So Whitney in and of herself as a human being was in a soul war 
for her soul. Now, you are never fully disconnected from the God energy, so when Whitney is ready to actually ascend and step back into that and, and go back home, so to speak, she will. But this is kind of what she was showing me. I am with my God, is what she was saying. I caught it, and I'm like, wait, what's that mean? Okay, well, that's the wording. When somebody says God, you have to understand what are they talking about? What is their God? What is their happiness? Some people's happiness is freedom. Some people's happiness is money. Some people's ha happiness is um, connection. Other people's happiness, it depends. So that's how I started to focus on our energy again and really delve into it on the astral level. All right, you guys, I have a client knocking at the door, so I must go. Uh, once again, my name is Sloan from sloanbella.com.